Kentucky and Kansas City, Missouri. See more better with freeprescriptionlenses.com. But call me Mo, Mo Better, because I have you seeing Mo Better, looking Mo Better, and I'm going to show everyone else how I bring that love and feeling back to glasses when I cut the new Transitions Gen 8 brown lenses with Crizal Sapphire for your, your Oliver Peoples 5186, which is the Gregory Peck, and the 1485, which is the Buff Tortoise, and the 45 eye size. If I can get this bag open, okay. Take your frame out, of course, that comes with it, but Oliver Peoples Los Angeles, great company. Now, years ago, I used to sell them. I do not offer these anymore. So, if anybody wants lenses for your Oliver Peoples, you gotta mail them to me. So, of course, they come with a little plastic sleeve on the left temple to protect the temples from rubbing together during shipping from Italy. And I'm going to put that on there when I ship to you. This is the Buff Tortoise. It is a... Where's a good piece of white? Yeah, you can see a little bit of a beige color to it. Here, let's use that. You can see a beige color to it. It's not a true crystal. Amazing light tortoise. This is known as Japanese tortoise or English tortoise. Very well-made frames incredible hinges you can see the front side of the rivet there same as on that one super great quality the keyhole bridge whereas this is more like a saddle bridge it would go over a horse this is called a keyhole because like the old vintage homes i say vintage but the older homes had a skeleton key for the door and it looks like that's what would go in there classic styling you just can't go wrong with this frame so i'm gonna pop out the original demo lenses and trace this frame so that years from now, should he ever need new lenses, I can mail them right to his home and Tuggy can put them right in. First off, he wants me to give a shout out to the Kansas City, Missouri Police Department, of which he is a part of. Be glad to do it. Kansas City is a great town. My wife had a conference there years ago and I loved it. Um, what was I doing? Oh, yeah, this is a block, or as I like to call it, Jenny from the block. I need to attach this to your lens while it is cutting. So I need two double-sided adhesive stickers, of which I've got these two here. The black side is the sticky side. I'm a, whoa, not sticky enough. Stick that onto the first block. Do the same thing now for the second one. Pull the paper away to make the black side sticky. That little silver button is a magnet. It's going to do its job five times tonight. No, twice. Twice. First time it's going to attach itself to another magnet there in the arm. Oh, but i got to trace the frame. 2477. 2477. 247. And an extra 7 to grow on. Hit start. A little stylus is going to pop up. Go around. Trace the inside bevel of the right side of the frame before doing the same thing on the left. Here at FreePrescriptionLenses.com where everyone loves a bargain and no one is disappointed in quality. You buy any genuine frame that I sell and you'll get one free pair of clear single vision prescription lenses or non-prescription fashion lenses. My receipt has my federal ID tax number, so if you have vision insurance or unused health savings account flex dollars, you will get reimbursed for your purchase. Now, I'm considered out of network for insurances, so you will get your out of network reimbursement. You will get a full reimbursement on your flex card. So need to program the, that is the shape we'll be cutting, your pupillary distance, which is 63, divided by 5 is, I have, no, okay, divided by 2 is 31.5, since you have two eyes. Wouldn't it be cool if you had a spider and had eight eyes? What's 63 divided by 8? So, we're going to raise the optical center height up to 24, starting at half. The blue cross is the geometric center of your frame, your eye is actually just next to that but I'm gonna raise the optical center height up to 24 now we had a little discussion on that he told me what he thought it should be and I quickly ignored it <laughs> and here's why here's some fun your lens is a minus lens thin at the center thicker at the edges so if you can imagine if you were to bisect this lens you have almost something like an hourglass shape it is thin in the center and thicker at the edges. The further you go from the center, the thicker they keep getting. But your eye is going to be sitting roughly right here. If I move the optical center up, you're going to have base up prism. If you can imagine a part of a triangle, of course your lens is actually like this on all four sides. But if your eye 
if the optical center is moved up too high where your eye is. Now, if this were a progressive, it's a different story. But they have something called yoked prism, Y-O-L-K-E-D. You will have base up prism, a triangle. It's almost like a prism. You will get a prismatic effect when you look down because you have to look down so far at your phone or anything else that you're doing with your, your daily life. So I'm only going to go 20.5, 3.5 above the center, which is plenty for this frame. I've been doing this a long time. Trust me, I know what I'm doing. At least that's what I tell people. <laughs> my wife doesn't believe it, not one bit. But then again, my wife doesn't believe me for anything. So I told her I was going to be home an hour ago. Yeah, that ain't going to happen. So where was I at? Oh, I was feeling good. That's where I was at. Oh, yeah. So. PD, opposite sun height. Now I can dot up your lenses. Okay, so we're going to come down here. By the way, have I told everyone out there how much I love coffee? Well, it's time you found out. All right, so we're going to turn the axis wheel to 135, which corresponds to the axis of his right eye. The first of his eight right eyes, not to mention his eight left eyes. But we're going to put the power drum on minus 175 after we stop at zero. Make sure everything is centered. Minus 175. This comes with a little aura on there, as they say in the South. That is an L, which is what they say in the South. <laughs> but the aura, I'm going to put there, rotate it until the spherical component comes into view first. Find the center of the lens. Check your astigmatism correction. I have what you have this the smallest amount possible. That's looking good. I'm going to put three dots on your lenses. Hey, get out of here. I don't need a partner. See that thing come flying through? And that is Aura for right. Let's do the same thing for the left. You have a minus two sphere for the left. So we're going to put the power drum on two. Spherical just means you have no astigmatism correction. I do want to raise it up, find which portion I want to use because literally I can do whatever. I'm just finding where I just want to make sure it is high enough. Nope, let's do it over here because I'm going to use the top half of the lens since I'm decentering up to 24, not 29. And really, I only need one dot here because I don't have to worry about any astigmatism correction to orient. And so I'm going to label that one L. And if you guys missed any of that, say it with me. Let me recap. Oh, it's a bad joke, but free bad jokes with every pair of glasses made. Now, this one does have the three dots, which tells me that it's oriented in there perfectly, even though you have the smallest amount of astigmatism correction. Now, you can tell at some point in your life if you're going to have astigmatism, if, if you're hungry right before you eat, there's a good chance you will have astigmatism. If you're sleepy when you wake up, at some point in your life, you're going to need glasses. If you're tired right before you go to sleep, I'm telling you, one time in your life, you're going to need glasses. So we're going to pull the paperweight and make the black side sticky, line up the magnet. Let's put two blocks on the right lens. Oh, okay, we'll share. Put one block on the left lens. Pupillary distance, the same, divided by two. The left lens has mirrored the right. Don't you like how the left lens is on the right side of the machine, the right side is on the left? Yeah, when you figure that out, let me know. When you figure out a lot of things in life, let me know. I'm still trying to figure them out. So, hit that button, the block goes on the left lens. Now, this is the edger. This is what costs $40,000. I recommend everyone go out, buy them, and put them on the handlebars of your bike, Lydia. And then you can cut your own lenses at home, and you won't need this guy with the two thumbs and the bad jokes to do it for you. Now, I mentioned Lydia because that's Tuggy's daughter. Who has seen him wear one pair of glasses her entire life so he's going to look weird with these glasses on although something tells me he's going to look weird with them off he's going to look weird in the dark he's going to look weird in the sunshine he's going to look weird when he sits on a couch or in a chair or in a... <laughs> hey um that's why i shouldn't pick on tuggy but then again his check already cleared so i guess i can um and I'll have these glasses sent out before he ever sees this video. But the actual, oh, we gotta wake up the computer. I need more coffee. So, job ID number 2477. 
Secret Agent 2477, or as I like to say, installment 2477 of my 330 million volume series of making a pair of glasses for everyone in America. And Lydia's going to need some by the time I get around to 330 million. But stay tuned and watch them all because I've got a surprise ending. I'm, I'm going to spoiler alert. Make sure you watch my 330, 330th million video. You're going to love the ending. I'm telling you now. Um, but these are polycarbonate lenses. If they were plastic, high-index plastic, or Trivex, I would select that. Or my favorite, TBD, to be determined later. Um, I'm not going to polish the edge of the lens because it's not going to be seen. I'm not going to put a safety bevel on the front convex side of the lens because why would I? But I am going to put one on the rear back surface concave surface of the lens because why shouldn't I? So I'm going to now the magnet is going to do its job a second time. It's going to attach itself to another magnet there in the chuck. Or as I like to call it, the Charles because I just don't know this machine well enough to call it chuck. Hit the green start button. The door closes, the clamp shuts, the lens will be traced by two white styluses. By the way, if you have a funnier joke, write it down on a $100 bill. I'll read it on the air and give you credit for the joke. You don't even have to include your name. I'll recognize your handwriting. So it's going around tracing the shape of the right lens, going around twice, measuring the thickness of the lens to know where to place the bevel so you have the least amount of edge thickness showing, of which I will go out on a limb or I will stand over here on this limb and say you will have no edge thickness with this prescription in this frame. Now I do cut lenses all day long for how much? For Quanto? For free. And that does become a little bit more critical, but for now, you'll have no edge thickness. Now, there's water in the background to catch the optical sawdust as it comes off the cutting wheel, also known as Schwarf. May the Schwarf be with you. <laughs> Sorry, I went a little Peter Brady there by voice crack. Um, the polycarbonate lens is cut dry, meaning that no water sprays onto the lens for the duration of the cutting cycle. Now, plastic high-index plastic and Trivex lenses cut wet, meaning that water sprays on them the whole time. But your lenses are made out of polycarbonate. Polycarb is 40% thinner and lighter than regular plastic. They are virtually unbreakable. These are high-impact ballistics grade lens material. The same lens material that our soldiers wear overseas in combat zones to protect their eyes from shrapnel from flying debris. If you notice your lens is completely flat, it's about to drop down onto the bevel wheel to get the V-shaped bevel so it stays inside the bevel of the frame. It also has 100% UVA and UVB protection. We know what the sun's harmful ultraviolet rays can do to your skin there in Kansas City where your eyes are eight times more sensitive than your skin. So you have permanent sunscreen for your eyes. Unlike the lotions, creams, and sprays that need to be reapplied every couple of hours when you're in direct exposure to the sun. Now you have the Crizal Sapphire, which is the nicest coating from Essilor. The machine that applies the Crizal Anti-Glare treatment is three features in one. It uh, reduces glare when driving at night, particularly driving at night in the rain. But street lights, stop lights, computer screens, overhead lights, not to mention blue lights, on top of cars that you may see a lot of on your daily job. The second feature is it reduces reflections when someone's looking at you so they're not looking at their reflection in your glasses. So it makes for much better eye contact. Plus if someone takes, if you take a selfie, you're less likely to see your phone in the lens or if someone takes a picture of the flash, you're less likely to see that. So water is spraying on there. It tells me it's in the last few seconds. I'm going to open this door with my mind. Lydia, help me. Open this door with your mind. Good job, Lydia. I can do other things with my mind. I can melt ice with my mind. I can. I just have to stare at it for a couple hours, and then I can melt it. So let's see if it fits first time around. The reason why I put the safety bevel on the back surface, I want to smooth everything off. It's not like this is terribly rough, but I'm going to push down, apply force on from the lens to your frame to see if it fits. And it doesn't feel like it's doing that, so I don't want to scuff up your frame in any way. So I'm going to take it down a tenth of a millimeter, put that back in, hit retouch. It's going to go straight to the bevel wheel in the middle. But as I was saying, the third part of your treatment is that the machine that applies your Crizal anti-glare coating costs well over a million dollars. It takes over 24 hours to vaporize eight different coatings onto your lenses in a sterile, clean room 
in between those coatings your lens gets an acid bath washed and air dried so because of the time and the expense they put the industry's hardest scratch coating on there to protect your time and investment now Crizal Sapphire has the least amount of reflection of any of the Crizal coatings they it's called the angle of incidence when you do see a reflection and it has the least amount it's at 15 degrees other anti glares were at 45 percent this is at 15. cosmetically it's the best looking anti-glare treatment from Crizal The other nice thing about your Transitions Brown is that it blocks 30 to 40 percent of harmful blue light emitted from today's electronic devices such as cell phones, tablets, computer screens. Stop it, stop it. I tried to open it up too quick. Now it'll open. Dry everything off. See if it'll fit this time. No, let's take it down another tenth of a millimeter. Oops, I went too far. Too far. Back to retouch. So when I was in Kansas City, there is a, I ate barbecue for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Finally, my wife was like, can I just have a salad for dinner? But I went to all the classic places. There's one, the first one I went to, I believe, was black owned. It had pictures of astronauts. And there on the wall, all the famous celebrities that have been in there, really good. The last one, I think it was called Jack's. It was in a high-end shopping district, the old cattle yards. But for breakfast, Guy Fieri has a show, Diners, Drive-Ins, and Dives. He went to a place that had the best corned beef hash he had ever had. And I went and I had it. It was okay. I mean, but while I was sitting there eating, the waitress walked by with a dinner-sized plate of a honey bun. And I asked, what was that? When she walked by, she says, that is a deep fried honey bun. And it was absolutely amazing. So I went back the next day. I had to have it. They have two sizes. And I went back the next day to order one. I, and I ordered. They have two sizes. A, a smaller one that they microwave and the larger one that they deep fry. And I wish I could remember the name of this place because I want to go back there. I believe if anyone watching this video knows the name of that restaurant, please leave it in the comment section. When you walk in, the, it was near downtown. I was staying at, oh, was it the Sheridan? I can't remember. Okay, so there's a Main Street hotel. The Hallmark Place is over here. But when you go down the Main Street, there's a hotel that has a glass walkway over the road. Um, but the restaurant was over here on the right. But um, they asked if I, when I ordered the large one, which was the size of a dinner plate, they asked if I wanted anything else. And I was like, you got to be kidding me. How does anyone, I think it's in there now. How does anyone eat something else? Is that people do, they order pancakes, they order bacon, eggs, all that stuff. I mean, literally, I could not finish mine. But I have, being from the South, and I heard something was deep fried, because we deep fry Snickers, we deep fry Twinkies, we deep fry Coca-Cola. I had to have a deep fried honey bun. So I'm going to put this into the Chuck, the Charles, the Chucky baby, the Chuckarama, or today I'm calling it the Lydia. Ooh, you didn't see that coming, did you, Tuggy? All right, so the door closes, the clamp shuts, the lens is going to be traced again by the two used to be white styluses. I need to clean them off. But you can see it's just tracing the shape of the left side of the frame. And then checking the thickness of the lens at every point to know exactly and precisely where to place the bevel. To have the give you the best cosmetic look possible. Look at that, no edge thickness. What did I tell you? Let me go back over here on my limb. I said you weren't gonna have any. Now do you believe me? But if anyone knows the name of that restaurant, deep fried honey bun, brilliant. It was so good. I couldn't eat it all. But when you walk in the place, they have a glass carousel of cakes, giant cakes, huge cakes. If that helps anybody, of course it's been about eight, nine, ten years since I've been there, but Somebody please tell me the name of that place. I want to go back one day. Kansas City is a great town. I got there the day that they had the... Oh, uh, what is it? The, the Tour de Missouri. Amazing athletes. Unbelievable. No body fat whatsoever. But the town was laid out nice. It was clean. They had fountains everywhere. The city of fountains. I, just, I love that place. I really do. By the way, there is a place called Winston's. Chill, Winston. But I was in there. It's a late night diner. We were there. 
there was these high schoolers and they ordered a one gallon milkshake that they split and i was like no way by myself well i was with my wife she didn't want any part of it but i had to get a one gallon milkshake it came in this giant glass <laughs> instant brain freeze but they have a shopping district in the spanish market which i believe was the first shopping center or first mall in the country beautiful place high-end stores i mean Prada, Louis Vuitton, all that stuff at the Kansas City Art Museum. Great art, great town. Anyone gets a chance, go to Kansas City and get a deep fried honey bun and then a one gallon milkshake. So, I've already dialed the power in, minus 175, minus 175. You have a quarter of astigmatism, a quarter, yo, let me hold a quarter. And we end up at, hang on, I, get, I didn't go all the way. We end up at two. That's because minus one. If someone borrowed a dollar seventy-five from you and then they borrowed another quarter, Lydia, how much would they owe you? That's right, two dollars. That's where at two diopters in the red. Now your left eye. I'm not even gonna have to turn the power drum because it's already at minus two. So you're far sighted with your glasses off. Everything is much too large. That's why you can read with your glasses off, and you will have to take these off to read unless you need a bifocal but the um you need seven steps of far-sighted correction one step of astigmatism correction your left eye you only need eight steps of far-sighted correction dry everything off by the way i hear that uh the kansas city has a sports team that uh, just won the, the sports ball event. Sport ball, I think it's called. Super ball, something like that. I forget what it is. That pops in. Take that off. Add to my sticker collection. Dry that off through there. Let's see if I can find a place. I just had to do recent plastic surgery on here because it was collapsing under its own weight. So I took some of my shipping tape, wrapped it around this way and this way, and there's still a little bit of clear shiny tape there. So I'm going to cover up the shiny tape. That's what makes it fun now. Why? No, I'm not a hoarder. Why do you say so? Why would you think I'm a hoarder? <laughs> but, you know, I got, I'm not throwing it in landfill. i got to make the planet a better place for Lydia's when they grow up. So we're going to come down here, put it over that black dot, read the power. I didn't have to turn the wheel. Two! Can I get a two? So, pupillary distance is 63. Optical center height is 24. Okay, I made one of them 24 and that one 29. I'll split it with you. So, turn the card around. Hey, look, art. That deserves to be in the Kansas City um, Fine Arts Museum. Place the PD stick against my thumb. When we look at it on the left lens, we're getting 63. Not to the bottom of the lens, but to the middle of the deepest part of the frame. 24 millimeters. Look at that. Not 29, 24, 24. What is it from here? <laughs> that doesn't matter. <laughs> so, <laughs> just seems you're paying attention. All right, so this is the portion of every video. Oh, by the way, I don't sell this frame. I used to for $340, but I have to sell so many of them in a year, and I didn't do that, so I lost this account. Oh, here, let me play a little uh, little violin for me. Um, can I play it on here? <laughs> I no longer sell Oliver Peoples. Okay, so, um, but... I do charge for the lenses now, $49.99. The Generation 8 gray or brown adds $99.99. Crizal Sapphire, $139.99 for a total of $289.97 tax-free. The reason why I point that out now is a lot of people on the internet are having to charge tax. I don't. I'm in North Carolina. North Carolina considers eyeglasses a medical device, so there's no tax on medical devices. So, but this is the portion of every video that as I clean your lenses, I mention you that there's free shipping anywhere in the U.S. and Kansas City Mo is in the U.S. Kansas City, Missouri is in Missouri. It is not in Kansas, although I'm sure that everyone in Kansas is very proud of the Kansas City, Missouri Police Department. But I promised myself I wasn't going to say that, but I just couldn't help it. I couldn't help it. So the uh, 
but yeah, when you get these in the mail, there's a small chance that these could fit too loose or too tight. However, there's an 80% chance that one side is going to sit higher than the other. That's because 80% of people have one ear that's higher than the other. And I forget the percentage, someone has one in closer than the other. But because of that statistic, 99% of all optical shops will do free adjustments if you ask them. But I'm going to get these in standard alignment first, also known as a three-point stance. The three points are one, two, and the bottom of the frame being three. I sent them on the counter and press down. There is no wobble. Now, I'm part of that 80% when I take off my Ray-Bans. Now, I'm wearing the Oakley 8149 Pitchman R Carbon, but mine don't wobble because of the Pilot Temples. When I do this, my Ray-Bans, they do wobble on the counter, but they sit level on me. Let me put mine back on so I can see what I'm doing. By the way, he's thinking about getting another pair in gray. Look at this. I've got the Photo Fusion Blue from Zeiss. I'm only going to do it for a second so I can see what I'm doing. Check out the blue color. Check out the blue color. So, I'm going to go ahead and activate the Transitions Gen 8 Brown. Now, I send out a selfie request in every package. Tuggy, I would love to have two. One with you indoors with them clear. One with you outdoors with them showing them brown. The, I also send out clean instructions not only for your frame and lenses, but for the premium microfiber cloth that I provide. The Crizal cleaning cloth, and you should have one from Oliver Peoples in here. You do as well as how to care for your case so it lasts you for years. Now let me back up. I said premium microfiber cleaning cloth. Asterix. I've run out of my orange, my other cloths, all the other colors. All I have left is the dark blue. The printer, I used to have lighter color blue which you could read the black print. Now, black print on a dark blue cloth, you can't read it. It's I'm setting myself up for failure, passing these things out because you get it and you're like, I'll be damned, I can't read this out of my new glass. Lydia, I'm gonna put a quarter in the swear jar. Um, but yeah, so I feel bad. Don't worry. New cloths are on the way. So, but this is what your lenses look like before they have been activated. I'm going to expose them to a strong burst of ultraviolet light. As you can see, it takes about 30 to 45 seconds for transitions Gen 8 lenses to turn dark a little bit longer when you come back inside. 45 seconds to a minute, minute 15, but Tuggy and everyone else pay attention all transition lenses get dark on day one and continue to darken every day for the first couple weeks are exposed. After that, they will work for years at maximum performance. The only time they won't work is behind the windshield of a car. Your windshield absorbs the sun's harmful ultraviolet rays that would cause your dashboard to crack from sitting in the sun all day. And that's why they don't turn dark in a car. Now, don't you worry, Tuggy. These will keep getting darker. Come on. We talked about that. Don't you remember? Now, they're also temperature sensitive, meaning they will be darker when it's 85 and below than they will when it's 95 and above but i remind everyone when it's 100 degrees outside you're miserable they're miserable nobody works 100 percent when it's 100 degrees outside we all work much better once it starts to cool off and as i continue to run my mouth you'll see a minute to a minute 15 from now they'll be back to virtually clear but do me a favor like this video subscribe to my youtube channel click the bell icon so you get future notifications of uh, frame and lens combinations as they come out. You can follow me on Facebook and Instagram as Free Prescription Lenses. On Twitter as Free RX Lenses. If you have any questions, you can always email me at the Contact Me page of this website. You can also leave a question or comment in the comment section below. That includes you too, Tuggy, when you get these. By the way, when you do take a selfie, um, can you do the at sign free prescription lenses? Tag me should you ever take one. I'd appreciate that. But yeah, Tuggy in Kansas City, Kansas or Missouri, whatever's closer. The uh, I said I wasn't going to do that. You know, thank you so much for the purchase of the Transitions Gen 8 brown lenses. The Gen 8s are now only available in gray and brown. Uh, later in the year, they will have uh, the blue, the amethyst, the amber. Now you can get the Zeiss in gray, brown, green, and blue like I have. They're already using the Gen 8 technology. Um, so you can go ahead and get all the colors from them, which he said he might do for his next frame. He's going to get a pair of these in the Workman gray. The gray would look good in that. The blue would look awesome too. But thank you so much for the purchase of your lenses, the Transitions Gen 8 with Crizal Sapphire. And now for your own Oliver Peoples, 5186 the Gregory Peck model this is color 1485 they call this color buff with the tortoise temples and now everyone else has got a chance to see how I get silly and bring that loving feeling back to glasses thank you